Hey guys, welcome back to the office. I don't know what I titled this, uh, but whatever it was, thanks for clicking on it. I'm going to do something funny. I haven't decided what yet, like death of trucking, trucking's dying. Why am I doing that? I don't know. Just to be like all the other expert YouTubers. <laughs> I can't even follow those guys anymore. It's too much for me. So uh, is trucking going uh, a little bit down? Of course. You know, I started doing this uh, well, about a year ago, I guess, maybe a little bit over. Um, my main reason was to just pass along the advice uh, from what I've learned for over 35 years in this business. And I did not know it was going to play, <clears throat> play out like this. I mean, I did know to a certain extent because back then we were in the peak of the 4 and $5 a mile um, rates and everybody was uh, an owner-operator overnight and buying expensive equipment. And uh, guys like me are sitting back going, this, this ain't going to fly uh, when the rates go back down because they will. They always do. I've been saying for a year. Um, up and down. That's trucking, man. It's a roller coaster. So, uh, and of course we had all kinds of YouTube experts. They're still out there. Most of the YouTubers, you get to watch them though. Some of them may be nice and sit down and have a beer with them and everything. They just, uh, been in the game two, three, four, maybe five years. That's not long enough to know much of nothing when it comes to the business end, let alone driving and things like that. So, but what I was getting at is what I've been saying has, uh, come to pass it's coming to pass uh rates are going down um that's just part of the game and i've been telling you guys if you're not an owner operator don't don't become one uh don't get in this don't and i'm still saying this is not the time this is not the time we're getting close when i tell you it's time to get in you're probably going to think i'm crazy because when is the best time to become an owner operator uh, unless you have quite a bit of capital, then you can do it at any time. But if you're like the guy that just started out, you know, you might have 20 grand saved up, 10 needs to go to a truck, and then you got 10,000 in reserves. When is the very best time? When the market is at the very lowest uh, it's going to be at. It's hard to predict that. But when we get down around, uh, you know, a buck and a half, buck 80 a mile, somewhere in there, I'm going to guess for uh, drive in freight uh, and a couple dollars a mile for flatbed freight, maybe even a hair under that's when you jump in the game. Because if you can survive down there, you will flourish when it gets really good. And uh, some other things I've been saying from day one based on the years I've done this, don't get your own authority. That's a dumb decision to go do if you're gonna be a one-man truck. I've done videos on it. You're far better off to be leased to a carrier of decent size. They have contract freight uh, like CRST does that pays much more. The spot market is an absolute bloodbath right now uh, but our agents are keeping our rates pretty good they're doing good they're really bending over backwards and working with these shippers and stuff and uh we are surviving um it has dropped in a lot of areas i'm having to work really hard right now to stay at that three dollar a mile uh range i know a lot of guys you guys aren't doing it uh, I understand that because I'm having to stay in a very specific lane. I'm having to change my tactics, do shorter hops. I'm having to work a lot more. I mean, this week I had uh, one day that was two drops and a pickup plus 300, 400 miles back. And um, the last one was pickup in the morning, deliver in the afternoon. It was uh, 300 miles or so, but that was a tarp and untarp. It was a lot of work. Uh, but it paid me 1100 bucks. I think we're going to go over that. Uh, so that's a pretty good day. Uh, that's well within my business model. So now is the time, and I've been saying this, we're going to separate <clears throat> the men from the boys. If you can survive when things get rough, you're going to be okay when things are great, obviously. But this is, you're going to see, we're seeing them fold up right and left. Uh, and that's going to continue to happen because the feds, uh, raise the interest rates. Um, I'm not going to go into all that, but if you don't know, the Fed, Federal Reserve has nothing to do with the federal government. They're a bunch of corrupt bankers, but we're not going to go down that. And they flourish when things crash too. So the rich get richer when there's a crash. So don't think that they're against a crash. They're all for it. They know how to move things around to where they benefit from that. So um, is there going to be a full-blown 08 crash? God, I hope not, because that was tough, man. That was really tough on us back then. And uh, 
Uh, everything I just said, even though I'm not patting myself on the back saying, hey, I told you so, blah, 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 because it's heartbreaking. I don't like to see hardworking people uh, go out of business being misled by YouTube experts and other people in the industry. Um, I'm here to help, and I don't want to see anybody fail, okay? That's the whole purpose of this channel is help people succeed, not fail. I don't want to be right. I don't want to say do this and then you do something else. I'm not going to be the guy that goes, well, I told you not to do that, dummy. I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to give you the best information I can. Uh, you're a grown man or woman. You follow it if you want. So uh, let's get to news. Let's get to news after we blabbed all that. Talladega, the 8th and the 9th. CRST guys, come on down. It's going to be fun. going to be fun a couple weeks away. Uh, we just covered the rates. Rates are dropping. Uh, fuel price is still high. What a joke. Uh, they went down, they're crawling back up. You know, it's a complex issue. Blame whoever you want. It's not, it, you go political, but, you know, it does have a lot to do with Russia and things like that. Uh, just talked about the interest rates. They're, they're, they're going up. That's a huge thing. If you ain't buying a house, uh, you may not think much about this, but construction projects, uh, so for you flat betters, construction projects are all financed. They're millions of dollars. And a uh, big jump in interest rates can just just say, well, well, we can't do this project. We ain't got the funding for that. That's uh, It's going to cost too much. And uh, they're going to hold off. And they're not going to buy a lot of stuff. They're going to buy only as they need in hopes that those rates come back down. So that interest rate hike is, uh, man, if, if high fuel wasn't hard enough on the trucking industry, that is really hurting us now. And it's going to hurt us really bad coming up in the near future. So thank you very much, Federal Reserve. I hope you all burn. And anyways, uh, equipment prices, that will drop the equipment prices. It will have to. Um, because I know if I was financing, uh, going to finance a trailer and it jumped from uh, two and a half, three percent to over six, I mean, that that's a couple, three, four hundred dollars a month. I mean, that's a that's a make or breaker right there. That's uh, could be going from, yeah, I want the trailer, but I don't want it anymore. So I'm hoping between all of this equipment will come down, but it sure doesn't seem to. These uh, they're playing the supply game and the materials were too high. Let them sit, guys. Let them sit. I called on a trailer the other day. They're still mid-60s when it should be mid-50s. I don't care. I'll rent this trailer until I retire. I ain't doing that crap. I'm seeing trucks sit all over, all over. So there's plenty of trucks out there to buy, but these dealerships and Facebook people and everybody else still think you're going to get 200 grand for their truck. Don't buy it. Don't do it. My, you will be out of business. Do not do it. Other than that, that is all I think I have. So let's get, and I will crunch these numbers of what's in the envelope. What do we do this week? I don't know what it is. It was a good week. Um, so we'll get to that and we'll be right back in a minute. See you bye. All right, guys, we're back. You know, this is the one video I'd like doing because I'm going to do this anyways. And I've told you before, you need to do this. You need to track constantly, at least twice a month. I do it every week. Uh, what your business is doing? Are you making any money? Do you need to make changes and adjustments or anything like that? So um, I tell guys all the time, they ask me, uh, uh, should I be an owner operator? Or is it worth it? I go, it's only worth it if you can run the business in. If you can do the numbers and think ahead and juggle a lot of different things and wear a ton of different hats, yes, it will pay you more money. If you are not the guy that can handle that kind of pressure, you're not good with numbers and you're not good at thinking ahead, uh, it's not for you. So stay a company driver. So let's get rocking. We started the week. We left Monday at about 10, 30 or 11. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, I went out to breakfast with the old duffer, so I know I didn't leave too early. About 10 a.m. or something, maybe somewhere between 10 and 11. I don't know. I was already loaded. Um, I picked those beams up Friday and brought them home, so... Uh, Monday, we left. Tuesday morning, we delivered those beams in Cambridge, Ohio. That load paid me 1000 Oh, and all these numbers, as always, because I get this question a lot, no matter how many times I say it. These numbers are to me after CRST takes their 25%. And own authority guys are like, oh, 25%, I never give up 25%. Okay, I want you to pay close attention to these numbers. The spot market ain't coming nowhere near. Um, I'll, I'll give you a preview. I averaged 319 a loaded mile this week. You ain't doing that on the spot market right now. You're 250 a mile. 
uh, under your own authority. So am I giving up 35, 25%? No, because I'm making 25, 30, 40% more. So that's an irrelevant argument that we've been over and over and over again. But if it's that kind of stuff right there. If you can't see the big picture, run your own business. If you can't see a simple little thing like you're not giving up 25% if you're making 40% more or 30% more. If things like that don't make sense to you, being an owner operator is not for you. I don't know how we got sidetracked. So let's get back to where we were. All these numbers are to me after CRST takes their percentage, okay? Their percentage of the higher paying freight. So that that load paid me $1,817.75 for 294 loaded mile on 617 miles. We then deadheaded 113 miles to Cleveland, Ohio on... Uh, Actually, it's called, I don't know, some suburb of Cleveland, but we picked up a two-stopper, uh, had to be tarped, uh, going to Earth City, Missouri, and St. Louis, uh, which that was a, a long day. The next, We unloaded that the next day, reloaded. Well, we loaded that day, drove, slept, got up the next morning, uh, did both those stops and a pickup, and drove all the way back to Portage, Indiana, or actually uh, East what is it? East Chicago, Indiana, same thing. Anyways, that load paid me $1,830 uh, for that two stopper at 320 on a mile on 570 miles. Uh, after that, I got to, uh, yeah, we got up to, uh, we loaded in Granite City after doing those two stops, and then drove, uh, got up to Sh East Chicago, Indiana there, probably about 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. Um, that was a single coil, paid me $955 or 320 a mile on 298 miles. I got to let off the gas there a little bit. This is where the strategic um, picking what I want. When I unloaded that coil, there just wasn't nothing. We were at what, Wednesday, Wednesday maybe? Yeah, that was Wednesday or Thursday morning. Thurs Thursday morning. Thursday morning, I was empty uh, about 10 o'clock, and there was nothing going in the direction that I wanted. Uh, and nothing, there was a couple little things, but I factored in the, you know, deadhead, which I do factor, but some things, it just wasn't paying nothing. And there was a load for the next day that I took, I booked it on Thursday, but I couldn't load it till Friday morning. So I sat around for 10 o'clock Thursday morning until Friday, the next morning, like six o'clock. So it was kind of nice to let off the gas. I went over there to that big truck stop in Lake Station, Indiana, the one with the two truck, uh, blue beacons. Got my truck washed, and uh, they did a good job. I'm not a big fan of the Blue Beacons usually, but that one did a spectacular job. Uh, and then I uh, I just kind of lounged around with the flip-flops. It was great. I, I took a shower. I uh, slept and napped and talked on the phone with my wife and drove her crazy all day. I got to park next to a really cool, you know, I have no interest in being a company driver again, but my kid, I think, kid, put the pictures in here. All right, right here. You see this truck? Now you offer me something like this, some decent pay, and at least let it run 70 miles an hour or something, your boy could be bought. You know, that's that's a couple hundred, 300 grand worth of equipment right there. Nice. That was a glider. Um, I believe it's a company truck based on the truck number and a few other things. Um, it had a late single turbo cat in it. Um, before It wasn't an Acer. Those sound totally different. So... It was probably a 6NZ, maybe a 2WS, but it was a single turbo cat. He was idling and had that good cat growl. Um, my favorite engine of all, not the one I would put as the best overall. I'm going to do a video on that. So uh, anyway, so I kind of got to let off the gas and kick it with the flip-flops. Uh, it wasn't bad. It's nice to kind of chill. I don't do that. Usually when I leave the driveway, it's hammered down. Go, 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 go. And I take weekends off. This is where I do my downtime with my family. So... Anyways, we got a little sidetracked again. Picked up that next morning in Portage, Indiana. This would be Friday morning early. I don't know, 5.30, 6 o'clock. Uh, had to load those skidded coils. Did a video on that and tarp it and dropped the hammer and got down to Redbud that afternoon and unloaded it. Um, that load paid me $1,100 at 342 a mile on 321 miles. So that's pretty good. You know, I guess that was probably eight, nine hours a day for 1100 bucks. I'll do that every day. Uh, and then I came home and that's the end of my week. So let's total all that up. My gross to the truck. 
uh, $5,702.75 or $3.19 a loaded mile on 1,806 miles. Uh, I didn't do all the empty miles for you, but there wasn't that many. Uh, 148 empty miles total for the week. Do with that what you like. So from here, I give you my cost, guys, what it costs me to be an owner-operator. I can't do everybody. I can't do lease purchases. I can't do people with truck payments and trailer payments. Impossible. So I give you my cost to see, show you what I do and give you ideas of what costs you may have and maybe some tax write-offs and things like that. So right off the bat, I have $375 per week in deductions from CRST. That is, again, my trailer rent. Bobtail insurance, quail com, transflow, all those little things. I had $1,639.33 worth of fuel receipts. As you see, that is lower because if you watched last week, it was higher, but I told you I was full of fuel. So that would carry over and drop the fuel cost down this week, which it did. Now, these are receipt credit price totals. Okay, I don't pay credit price. I pay cash price minus discount. So, you know, you got another 100 bucks ish off of that uh, maybe even 150 so um, but i don't know those totals until it all comes through the system so each week i give you the receipt totals uh i have 35 dollars worth of parking now here's the thing i go over and over with guys they think they're cutting a fat hog by all these you know um mud flaps and this and that and hey yeah you'll save a few bucks i guess but yeah i pay for these but a lot of times i use my points and you know showers that shower in indiana was 25 dollars, and i didn't even have a shower thing thank you to the guy that stepped up because i don't feel it flying jay a lot um but so if you save 20 20 dollars in fuel over here then pay 25 for a shower at the truck stop next door because that little place that you say fuel didn't have a truck stop but you didn't save nothing you spent money so don't forget about your rewards points and shower credits and again thank you to the guy that said no 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 and put his card up to the scanner for me so he was at $35 worth of parking, um, reserved parking at two places. I paid $49.30 for that truck wash there. Um, and then I had a charge on my credit card of Home Depot for $94.53. Miscellaneous shop supplies, mop and blow for the tires. Some pipe stake insulation. I did a video on that. It's coming up. And uh, shop rags, things like that. It's all a tax write-off, so... You minus all that, my net for the week after my expenses is $3,509.59. Make it probably $3,600 and some change. Time the fuel rolls around. And then Mr. Moss, don't know who you are, but thank you very much for the referral. i putting my name down when you came over here. So I got a referral bonus from him for $375. Bringing my week total net after expenses, $3,884.59. I'm going to quit trucking. I could do better at McDonald's, right? Come on, guys. Don't listen to them. Stay positive. All right, that's all I got for this week, and we will catch you on the next one. Keep the questions coming, and uh, if you want a specific video, let me know. I will try my best. All right, God bless you all. Bye now.